Hello, I'm Christelle Pereira. I'm a cook and a baker, and today I'm here at the Food 52 Studios cooking one of my favorite dishes from my brand new cookbook, Flavor Kitchen. It's a red Thai chicken curry pie. Okay, so first we're gonna start with basically the flavor base of our pies. We're gonna fry all the aromatics. So we've got regular onions, we've got leeks, scallions, ginger and garlic. So all the aromatics, which is gonna make it taste just so lovely and fresh and vibrant. I like to fry in coconut oil. Um, with this pie in particular, because it's a Thai curry pie, we're gonna have coconut milk in there. It's just synonymous, obviously, and it's nice and sweet. Um, so we're gonna just put about half of that in. We're gonna save an the rest of it for later to brown the chicken. So coconut oil is also really good because it's got a high smoke point. So if you're frying anything on a high heat, you always use something like a coconut oil because it doesn't burn. So we're gonna do this in stages, but all in one pan, so it's really easy. So we're gonna go in with the regular onions first. Just gonna soften them slightly. So we're adding these in first because they take the longest to cook. So we're gonna fry this for about a minute. So now we're gonna go in with the leeks. I'm gonna go in with our scallions. And then we have got our garlic and our minced ginger. So that's going in. Um, the reason why I haven't kind of kept, I've decided to mince them is because I want the flavor of those to actually disperse um, to form part of the base rather than sort of keeping them thick. Okay, so this is looking good. So I'm just going to transfer this to a dish. My top tip with chicken, always, always use chicken thighs. Thighs just have so much more flavor. And it's also really hard to overcook chicken thighs. They're juicy, they're tender. So whatever you do, just use chicken thighs. So you wanna just turn this on a, a high heat because you just wanna get a lot of color on it. We're not gonna cook this through, just get enough color so it kind of seals the chicken basically. Chicken is nice and brown. It's basically all opaque now. So now we're gonna add back in the aromatics that we fried before. So we're gonna chuck that straight in and we're gonna give that a little mix. And then the star of the show, obviously this is a red Thai chicken pie, so we have got red Thai curry paste. Now, yes, you can make your own curry paste, but I wanted this recipe to be quick and easy, so just use short-bought. But what I will say is if you are using short-bought curry paste, make sure you get a really good one. So now what's really important in any curry paste, you wanna fry off your curry paste because you've got all your spices in there and you really want to bloom those spices to bring out the flavors. Now the secret ingredient into making uh, a pie feeling nice and rich and thick is flour because what flour is going to do it's going to thicken your mixture so it's kind of it's a bit more hearty because obviously this is a curry but it's a curry filling so it turns your sort of standard curry into a thicker richer pie filling that's a bit more robust and sturdy. So this is looking good so now we're going to add in our vegetables so I have got here snap peas, I call them sugar snap peas. I've not cut anything too small, so I've cut these into thirds. So those are gonna go straight in. Baby corn is probably my favorite vegetable of all time. I just love it, it's nutty, it's sweet, but again, I've cut them into smallest chunks, so they're gonna retain a bit of bite. And actually, no, I lied. My favorite vegetables are probably mushrooms. These are shiitake mushrooms, they have so much flavor. They're my favorite mushrooms to cook with. If you can't get shiitake, you can use whatever mushrooms you have, chestnut, oyster mushrooms are really nice, and they work really well on the pie, so we're gonna chuck those straight in. So I'll just give that a stir, just so they're all incorporated. So they're coated in that lovely curry mixture. This is sizzling away. Sort of to bring it all together, we have got coconut milk. Um, always use full fat coconut milk, and it's genuinely because it has so much more flavor, yum. And actually, don't check out your tin because I have a no waste tack for you later on, so keep that to one side. Now this is nice on its own, but I just always like to add a little bit more just to really push those flavors out ever so slightly. So we've got here fish sauce, which is just goes hand in hand with all Thai cuisine. But then to counteract the saltiness, we have got a bit of maple syrup. So that maple just cuts through the saltiness of the fish sauce and the Thai curry paste and just keeps it really lovely and balanced. Before I season, the final ingredient that I wanna add in, again, very synonymous with Thai food. This is not a scallion, this is lemongrass. And I just wanna break it. Oh, this is one of my favorite smells of all time. So all you wanna do is just basically bash it. And this is just gonna really lightly release all of its aromas and just to keep this easy, all we're gonna do, do is just chuck that straight in the pan so you can just fold it in half. And basically what that's gonna do, it's just going to infuse in that lovely 
curry mixture. Okay, so all that's left to do is just season it with a bit of salt and pepper. We're just gonna let this cool down for a little bit. So I'm just gonna transfer it. I'm gonna transfer it to the dish so we're actually gonna bake our pie in. And then we can let that chill while we prepare the pastry. So just flatten that out. So what you wanna do now is we wanna get this really nice and cold. So leave this at room temperature just until it's cool to the touch, then stick it in the fridge so it's very cold because you wanna make sure that with your puff pastry, if your pastry hits a hot filling, your pastry is gonna melt and then it's not gonna puff up. So that's why you wanna make sure that your filling is nice and cold. I am using short-bought puff pastry because yes, I'm a baker, I love making pastry, but we don't have time. But what I thought we could do is, because we are using short-bought puff pastry, which is nice on its own, I just think it's nice to add a little bit more flavour, like a nice little layer of flavour inside. So we're going to make a really simple two-ingredient compound butter. You want to get about four tablespoons of butter, and then you want to get your curry paste. And all you're going to do is mix it together. You don't need uh, an electric whisk. As long as your, your butter it has softened, you can just use a tablespoon. Look at this. I mean, I could spread that on a piece of toast, quite frankly. It looks beautiful. It's so stunning and it smells incredible. If you want to make sure that your pastry just come out the fridge because anytime you handle any pastry, you want to make sure it's really cold. I'm actually just going to flour my worktop so it doesn't stick to it. That is your pastry there. I'm just going to flour both sides so it's nicely floured. And then I'm going to flour my rolling pin as well because we don't want a rolling pin to stick to our pastry. So just adjust that. Now all we're going to do is just roll this out. So you want to make sure that your pastry is slightly bigger than your, your pie dish basically. And then what you're going to do is get your compound butter and you're just going to spread it over half of your pastry. And you can also use a butter knife or something, but an offset spatula is good here because you can get it nice and flat. And then you're just going to fold this in half. And again, you don't need to be particularly neat, but just make sure that you try and cover up that edge like that. I'm just going to flour this again, just to make sure it doesn't stick to the worktop. But you just want to carefully but confidently roll out your pastry so that it's slightly bigger than the size of your pie dish. If a little bit of butter seeps out, it's, it's fine. Just roll out any air bubbles as well. You can even pop them if you want with a knife or a skewer. Okay, so I have made a mess, but we got this. And we're gonna chill this because all your pastry needs to be really, really cold so that your butter is really, really cold and um, so it puffs up nicely. So we're gonna chill this only for about 10 minutes just so this is nice and cold. Then we can assemble our pastry and bake it. So I've got my oven preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got our pie filling here that's nice and cold. It's been in the fridge about an hour, so it's lovely and cold. We've got our pastry, which has been in the fridge for about 10 minutes, and it's already firmed up nicely, which is what you want. So all you want to do is take this off, and you just basically want to measure it. Again, there's no real skill to this. You can see here, it's a little bit bigger than the, pastry, than the dish, which is good. So all you want to do is just basically tuck this in. So you're going to get a nice little fold, which again are going to become really lovely and puffy. So you just want to fold this inside. Now you can either, there's, there's two ways. You can either fold outside your dish or fold inside. I like to fold inside because I always find that when your pastry overhangs, then it sort of gets stuck. Whereas this way it's sort of all, I don't know, it's all nice and cozy and compact. So, and you can also, if you want, just make like tiny little folds. You want to get it nice and smug, like that. Perfect. So now, anytime you use puff pastry, you want to always give it an egg wash, just because you're sort of encouraging a nice little tan, a bit like tanning lotion. Now, any egg wash is usually just beaten egg with a bit of milk. So remember I said to keep your tin of coconut milk? It's because there's always a tiny bit of residue left. So we're just going to use that, basically, in our egg wash. You don't need a lot. So you, what you're going to do is crack your egg directly into your tin and then just whisk it in your tin. And that little bit of coconut milk will just dilute the egg ever so slightly. And it's also just adding more coconut flavor. Wonderful. So now you wanna get yourself a little pastry brush. This one's silicon, but any brush will do. And just lightly, but confidently, brush over your coconut milk egg wash. 
don't over egg wash it. You don't want your pastry to go soggy, but just enough so that it gives it a nice shine. Now you've got your egg wash on, it's a perfect chance to add on some sesame seeds because it's going to stick to that egg wash perfectly. And sesame seeds, I mean, it looks great, it tastes great, adds a bit of a crunch. Put as little as much as you want. I like a, a good few sprinkles like that. And then all you want to do, get a sharp knife and you want to basically create a little air pocket in the middle, so like a tiny little cross. And all that's going to do is just allow some of that moisture to escape. We don't want all the moisture to escape, that's why we're doing a little cross, so that some of the moisture escapes, so that the pastry remains nice and crispy, and then your pie should remain lovely and juicy. So, that, my friends, is the pastry, all finished, pre-baked. So all you're going to do now is pop it in the oven for about 30 minutes until the pastry is lovely and golden. Look at her, she is golden, she is bubbling, she is smelling gorgeous. Let's dig in. That sound. It's gonna get a bit of that crispy pastry. Mmm! Oh my gosh. So this is comfort food at its finest and if you want the recipe and I really think you'll want this one you can head over to Food52's website or of course you can grab a copy of my book where you'll get more than 70 recipes just like these that just capture the idea of fusion, creative twist on classics. So this one is super simple, super easy, but has so much flavour. So go make this now and thank me later. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your pie.